Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bobby News Prophecy Program, and my name is Alexander, Alexander Sashevedich. Welcome. We have been analyzing in the past three programs about the myths of Christmas. And indeed, we mentioned the man who uh, wrote an article, Jimmy Akin, asking all kinds of questions. So he further wrote in his article, The Calculation Theory. And this is what Jimmy Akin writes. The easiest date in Jesus' life to calculate is the day of his death. Just as December 25th was the winter solstice, March 25th, three months later, was the spring equinox, and the timing of Passover was determined by the spring equinox. Knowing that Jesus was crucified at Passover, it was easy for ancients to conclude he died on March 25th, and that became the standard date. Well, friends, let me state that Jimmy Akin does not know the date of Jesus' death, more on that you can find in an article online that we have what happened in the crucifixion week as far as december 25th goes the catholic encyclopedia states the following the gospels it says concerning the date of christ's birth the gospels give no help upon their data contradictory arguments are based the census would have been impossible in winter whole, popul whole population could not then be put in motion natalis invicti the well-known solar feast, however, of Natalis Invicti, celebrated on 25th December, has a strong claim on the responsibility for our December date. For the history of the solar cult, its position in the Roman Empire, and syncretism with Mithraism, see Cumon's epoch-making textus at monuments, etc. And then uh, it says uh, chapter 1, uh, paragraph 2, uh, and, uh, and line 4, 6, page 355. The Catholic Encyclopedia then continues, the earliest re reproachment of the births of Christ and the Son is in uh, De Pasch, uh, the work uh, entitled De Pasch, Comparison, O Quum Preclare Providentia Ut Illo Diocunatus Es Soli uh, Nasceretur Christus or in our English translation, oh, how wonderfully acted providence that on that day on which the Son was born, Christ should be born, end of the quote. Now, friends, since the census was impossible then, December 25th is not possibly the date Jesus was born. Jimmy Akin further writes, looking at the Gospels, he says, while the calendar date of Jesus' birth is something we cannot know definitely, the Gospels present us with solid information about the Nativity. Since Joseph's family was from Bethlehem, he and Mary were likely staying with family. But it is also possible that there were so many family members visiting for Caesarea's en enrollment, well, as we see in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 1, that the living area was full, and so Mary chose to give birth in another part of the house. Family rooms were on an upper floor, so Mary would have gone to the lower part of the house, which is where animals were kept, as indicated by the presence of the manger. What kind of animals were they? We cannot say, though. Cows, sheep, and goats were commonly kept. In any event, Jesus was likely born in the lower part of a, ho of a house, and most likely in a cave. Now, Mithra was allegedly born in a below-ground cave, and many, contrary to logic, claimed that Jesus was born in a cave, but he was not, friends. He was not. For the details, we have an article that you can find online entitled, Was Jesus Born in the Grotto of the Nativity? Now, Jim Akin now writes his conclusion to his article. It says, There are a large number of myths about Christmas. Yes, yes, I agree. There are many myths, but sadly, Jimmy Akin was attempting to perpetuate many of those myths. Jesus was not born on December 25th. Early Christians did not celebrate Christmas or even birthdays, to the surprise of many of you, because the birthdays were not, as the Catholic Encyclopedia asserts, the birthdays were not celebrated by saints, but by sinners, as they say. And true Christians, indeed, do the same until the day. They contend for the faith that was originally given to the saints, and therefore they do not celebrate nor, nor Christmas, neither birthdays. Christmas is not a biblical nor truly a Christ-centered holiday. It's a sentimental and commercialized pagan tradition. And indeed, on our Bible News Prophecy program, we do have a short 
message entitled 22 points to consider about Christmas. Christmas friends, in conclusion, our conclusion, we can say Christmas is, is a distraction from the gospel of the kingdom of God. It's not a Christ-centered holiday as its proponents sometimes or very often claim or they would love to see it being. Christmas has the wrong emphasis and it's not based on truth. The foundation of Christmas is demonic paganism and lies. Consider something else that Jesus also recorded uh, in his Revelation 22, chapter 22 and verse 14 and 15. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. We have proved throughout this program, dear friends, that uh, Christmas is, a, is an idolatrous practice rooted in paganism that has no relation to the true Jesus Christ. So, what is described in Revelation? Dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral, contrasted to those who are blessed and keep his commandments and have right to the tree of life. The question for all of you is, which are you? Are you one who keeps God's commandments or one who prefers to practice the idolatrous life of Christmas? So, we are presenting in these past programs, basically, all of these Christian myths. Yes, sadly, all of those myths have been perpetuated by the nominal Christianity and uh, all of those practices have been celebrated now for centuries. And even though those practices were basically adopted by the nominal Greco-Roman churches only three centuries after the uh, resurrection, the death and sacrifice and resurrection of true Jesus Christ. True Jesus Christ, friends, contrary to man-made tradition, certainly was not born on 25th of December. He was certainly also not crucified on uh, Friday afternoon and came back to life on Sunday morning. All of those are traditions. And you can use the Bible and the biblical account to prove that by seeing when uh, when John the Baptist was born and then six months later was the birth of Jesus Christ. We can calculate that because we know the shift, the priestly shift that uh, John Baptist's father observed. And we have those shifts, 24, that were established back in the Old Testament by King David. And they were all serving at the temple for certain at certain period of time. And those are all things we can prove from the Bible very easily. Sadly, there are other, not only Christmas, but there are so many other idolatrous practices, one of which is also the Valentine's Day. We'll talk about that when that festive season comes up very shortly after Christmas. New Year's Eve, of course, it's Roman New Year, and it has nothing to do with the revealed sacred year and the beginning of it, which is in the spring just as uh, God said to Moses and Aaron in the Old Testament. Then there is Easter. Look at the name. On the very forehead of that celebration, we see the pagan practice and celebration of Ishtar, the Assyrian and Babylonian goddess. And then there are also other myriads in various countries of practices and things done in honor of other gods, pagan gods, sun god, Mithra, and those practices have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It's interesting that this Christ Mass or Christmas is celebrated and is so popular in the Christian world, and yet there is nothing in that very celebration that has any connection to Jesus Christ or his apostles or the early church. And not only that, but uh, all of these pagan practices in honor of sun gods, Mithras, and all the other pagan deities are strictly forbidden in the scriptures. God simply says that detestable customs, often with those customs, uh, they, they came with sexual immorality and, and, and fornication, and God cannot stand it. However, 
You see, Saturnalia in the ancient Rome was so popular that the church was unable to exterminate it. So in order to accommodate all of those pagan masses who supposedly wanted to, to join Christianity and convert into Christianity, the church basically changed the uh, name of those pagan practices, pagan celebrations, and labeled them as Christian. So Christmas is one of those, instead of actually being regarded as the birth of the invincible sun, as that is what originally it is. No, it was uh, renamed Christmas. Its purpose was also uh, renamed uh, the birthday of Jesus Christ the Savior. And all of the customs that are associated with that were labeled as Christian. And yet, where in the world do you find wreaths, mistletoes, and other, other things in the old in the old or in the New Testament. Jesus Christ our Lord was the Lord of the Sabbath in the book of Mark chapter two. Jesus Christ our Lord was the Lord of true practices outlined for us in the Old Testament and confirmed to be the true Christianity in the New. There are many elements of the new Christianity of the New Testament that is that are contained in the Old Testament and they're all the explanations we need to have about the old practices in the New Testament. So in any case, Jesus Christ certainly could not take something that is detestable to God, something that is pagan, rooted in paganism, he could not take it and label, relabel it Christianity and command all of us to keep it in the New Testament. There is no way. Jesus Christ came to do the will of the Father. He was the exact reflection of the Father. And therefore, at that time when he came to this world, the only holy scriptures we had was the Old Testament scripture, the Hebrew scriptures. And then he said he did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And then again, you know, in Deuteronomy chapter 12, it was clearly said to us by God that all these pagan things we are not to practice, that we are not to inquire of these uh, nations uh, how they serve their gods. And the same uh, is true for today. We are not to be inquiring other gods and how these other nations serve their gods because all these religions, sadly, many of them, especially in the East, are just rooted in paganism and pagan practices and pagan beliefs. And the nominal Christianity of the Greco-Roman world is not different either. We were never told to keep Christmas, Easter, birthdays in the Bible. If, on the contrary, God commanded us, He gave us His commandments, His laws, His statutes, and His judgments. That is what we are to keep if we want to be true Christians. Christmas, once again, is based on lies, rooted in paganism, has nothing to do with Jesus Christ, friends, as shocking as it might be to many of you. So, if you want to be true Christians, turn away from those pagan things and pagan beliefs and practices and start uh, practicing what is written in your New Testament as Jesus Christ has, give, has set us an example of what we are to follow and what we are to celebrate. Thank you for your great attention. Until next time, goodbye, friends.